Hey everyone, this is David Pike, Motor City Mechanic again. I got another video for you today on a 6.7 liter Cummings diesel engine. We're going to be removing and cleaning the EGR valve. It's a pretty cut and dry procedure. Just make sure you allow some time for the cleaning fluid to actually do its job, which is about two to three hours. And also make sure you allow some time for it to dry once you wash all the fluid out. So with that, I want to go ahead and get my tools together. You get ready to watch. All right, first step we've got, we've got to get this nice little decorative plastic shield off because it sits directly above the EGR valve. And right over here, as you can see, this is the EGR valve in this location with the solenoid on the back end. I'll show you more of that shortly. We've got a total of four eight millimeter bolts around the perimeter here. We'll go ahead and get them out. There we go. All right, are gone. Pick them up, set to the side. Keep up your bolts. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to getting the CGR. We're gonna get it unbolted from the crossover pipe. And here's a better view of the EGR valve. This is the crossover tube that goes from the EGR cooler up to the EGR valve. And you got your electrical portion, the solenoid, and the connector. Now. These come as an assembly, the valve and the solenoid. Now the solenoid has one connector on the side. It's a single stage. Squeeze in, pull back. And you've got one right here. Don't worry about this. This is just a temp sensor. We've got one V-band clamp that that pipe attaches to the EGR valve with. And that's held in place with an 11 millimeter nut on a stud. We'll start loosening up that clamp. And then we've got four 10 millimeters around the perimeter right here. And that's all that technically holds it on. So let's go ahead and start getting some of that off. Try not to lose your bolts here. All right, so the 10's are out of the way. Now we'll move on to that 11 on that band clamp. Now you don't have to take the nut all the way off on the band clamp. You just get it loosened up enough to where what you're going to do is you're going to squeeze on it and let the back side come out. If you need to back off some more, so be it. Sometimes I think I got enough, other times I don't. So I don't take it all the way off myself. Let's see if we got enough now. We can squeeze. Here we go. And we'll just spread it apart a bit, take it off to the side. Now, with the Tim's off right now, what we're going to do is just with the palm of your hand, you can just give it a gentle tap, break it loose, and there you go. So here's our EGR valve. This is where the four 10 millimeters went around the perimeter. You've got your band clamp and you got your connect. It'll come as an assembly like that. When you go to reinstall it, just make sure you clean up the surface here where the gaskets were. I'd blow it out with some air as well. And you've also got one gasket on the tube. There you go. Make sure you replace that as well. Make sure you clean the surface on that as well. At this point, we got the EGR valve on the bench. We're going to start disassembling it so we can actually clean it. Now, we want to take the electrical portion off because that way we can move the valve that's inside. It's basically one shaft. It's got two valves built onto it. So we want the fluid to get in there and we want to be able to work it back and forth. So the solenoid has to come off. The solenoid's held on with four Phillips screws. Go ahead and get them off. Now the way that valve is held in there, basically if you're familiar with any valve train components, it's almost like a valve spring. 
Uh, there's a spring, uh, some keepers, and a retainer. Now that's what we've got to get compressed to get the keepers off. Now it's not a high tension or high. Um, it's it's not a put it this way. It's not a spring that takes a lot of force to compress. So you'll be able to do that by hand. It's just you need to watch out when you're doing it so you don't lose your keepers in case there's any kind of spring back. All right, last screws off. All right, there's a metal gasket there. You don't need to replace that. It's fine. Use it. And here's the top of the EGR valve with the keepers like I was telling you about. And they're much like a regular valve spring on a cylinder head. So I'm going to go ahead. What I like to do, because as I'm pushing in, it's going to keep going down. I shove a rag in one of the holes so that there's some resistance and it doesn't just bottom out. I just shove me a rag in and hole, nice and neatly. And then when I press down, we're gonna be able to get the keepers out now. Like I said, be careful. Your finger slips or anything, keepers can go flying across the shop. You got one of them off, sit to the side somewhere, I won't lose it. And I compress it again and do a little wiggling and get it off. There we go. Sit that to the side as you spring your keeper and your retainers. So now that I got it off, you can actually move it. But I can feel resistance, and that's one of the main reasons why we're cleaning it. So I've got some fluid, kind of prop it up at a certain angle where it works good. We've got our basic EGR system cleaner. The part number is right here, 68028729AA. Uh, straight through, you can get that straight through your, your Mopar parts department. And I just go ahead and fill up the area. Try to keep it as level as I can because of course it's going to want to come out one of the three openings. Now, whatever you can do to get it the highest. Now you can put some rubber plugs in here if you want on the back side. That's just what I use. I'll let it soak for a little while and then what I do is I'll come back every so often. And I'll work that valve. So the fluid starts moving around. I mean, right now, actually, it's starting to free up and, and move a lot more with less effort. Probably because the cleaner fluid's in there helping lubricate it. But nonetheless, I'll probably let it sit here for at least three, four hours. Uh, and once that's done, I'll go ahead and clean it out with water, spray it out, get it all out. And it's going to take a little bit of spraying because some of the chemical gets in different orifices in here. So keep spraying it until it's finally clean and then let it air dry. And then with this air dry, we'll work on getting it back together. All right, so we've already let it sit for a couple hours. We've uh, washed it out, it's air dried. You can see it down in there real good now. It's nice and shiny, it's moving easily. I can look at the surface of that valve all the way around and there's nothing stuck to it, so we're good to go. And I do the same procedure as I did taking it off. I shove a rag down in the bottom, kind of pack it in there. That way the valve don't have a tendency to want to keep dropping. And then what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of grease right around the edge of the valve, the stem that sticks up, because that's where the keeper's going to go. And I want the keepers to have something to stick to as I'm putting it together. That way they don't keep falling around. Now I just grab my spring, the retainer right there. And what I can do is I can do two things. I can use a pair of needle nose, press down on it, go down with it like this. And then try to put my keepers on, or I can just try to put them on top and just kind of press down until I get them on. Either way, just take time, uh, watch it that they don't, it doesn't pop back off and go somewhere where you can't find them because they're real small. I mean, that's just all they are right there. Both of them together, they're, they're pretty small, so they're easily lost. So just take your time, like I said, and use a pair of needle nose if you want. Go ahead and try it while we're filming. Keep it down as far as you can get it. Problem is, trying to get it down in there. There, I've got one on. What I do is I work on getting the other one on as well. And then uh, we'll put the solenoid back on. All right, so I've got the valve keepers back on. Make sure it works. Make sure they're fully seated, looks good. Now we can go back to putting the metal gasket on as well as the solenoid. And remember, the connector on the solenoid points to the same direction as that crossover tube inlet. I'll just put it on there. And now it's just a matter of installing my four Phillips screws. 
And once I get them on and tightened down, we'll move on to cleaning the gasket surfaces here, here, and along where the crossover tube goes. So there we go, we got our fully operational EGR valve back together now. It's cleaned, solenoid back on. Like I said, we'll take care of the gasket surface. The installation's just opposite of removal, 410 millimeters going down to the top. Then you got your V-band clamp that goes around here and the pipe from the crossover for the EGR cooler. Uh, just taking it down and your connector and then put the plastic cover back on top of the engine. Alright, so there you go. Cummins 6.7 liter EGR cleaning. Now you know from start to finish what you need to do, what you need to pay attention to. Uh, at this point, any kind of thumbs up on YouTube is greatly appreciated. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you scroll down to the description below the video, there are links to both of those. So once again, thank you for watching. Feel free to leave any comments, suggestions, anything you want to talk about. I'm always here. In the meantime, I've got more videos to make, and you keep watching.